Good morning, my name is Ralph Friedrichs and welcome to Take Your Life Back. Today we're going to talk about drinking ages around the world, globally. You'd be amazed what I'm going to tell you about some countries that don't even require a minimum age. Totally amazed by that, but as usual, I'm going to give a shout out to a couple people. First one would be to Dr. Luis Gonzalez over at Starting Point at S T A R T I N G P O I N T M N dot com. That's Starting Point M N dot com. And you can call him at 844 414 8444. Dr. Luis Gonzalez has two sides of his business. The first side is like my side, which is to take you and walk you from your addiction to your recover daily, 24 hours at a time. He or I will never ever talk about your past. Uh, we are not counselors, we are not therapists, what we are are addiction recovery coaches and it is our job to make sure that you walk 24 hours at a time from your addiction to your recovery to teach you how to live with addiction. To make sure that you have an action plan and the proper tools on today and tomorrow fighting addiction. You can reach him at 844-414-8444 and the other side of his business he can take you that's right, yes you, and make you into or turn you into an uh, addiction recovery coach. If you possess personality, professionalism, and passion, and you have some sort of addiction, whether it being your own or through someone else, maybe a loved one that you helped, uh, certainly give him a call there and uh, he can help you through his educational program make you into an addiction recovery coach. Also want to give a shout out to Pam Hemphill from Time to Heal. Uh, that is a uh, TV talk show on Channel 11 in Boise, Idaho. Also, uh, she um, uh, focuses on recovery and she is on YouTube. Uh, she's up to episode, I believe, 18 at this point. You can find her on my website. Uh, she has her own page on there at www.clearviews.info. That's C-L-E-A-R-V-I-E-S. Dot info. You can uh, see all her episodes uh, on my uh, on my uh, website, uh, but you can also go and find her on Facebook. She has an open group there, Time to Heal, and you can find her on YouTube. That's Pam Hemphill. That's H E M P H I L L, and first name is Pam. You can also go to both my websites. I just spoke about one of them, which is www.clearviews.info. And uh, that merely concentrates and gives you all the educational tools that you need to battle your addiction, that you need to help other people battle their addiction. That's on clearviews.info. And then you can also, just like Dr. Luis Gonzalez, uh, retain me at clearreform.com. And what I do is just like him, is to walk you from your addiction to your recovery daily, 24 hours at a time, never ever thinking or talking about yesterday. It is merely our job to make sure that you walk 24 hours at a time and you look forward of educating yourself and, and dealing with your addiction. So those are the shout outs for right now. Before we go any further, I just want to show everybody my uh, new business card and that business card uh, pretty much is like my phone number which is 844-405-HELP and here is the card and I want everybody to see it and you can see the help button addiction recovery help and that's what I do so it's 844 uh, 405 help let's dive right into the minimum ages throughout the world and a couple stores and this comes uh, directly from uh, I believe it's the ATF uh, I'm going to go directly to the countries that I was able to find that have no minimum age for drinking Albania, Angolia, Cambodia, Comoros, Cuba, Equatorial Guinea, Guyana, uh, Guinea-Bissau, Jamaica, Macedonia, Montegro, Morocco, Norway, Romania, Switzerland, Togo, Uruguay, and Vietnam. Those require no minimum age so people, I mean toddlers can drink there. Shame on them. I mean that is totally unacceptable. This is for minimum age of 16. Austria, Belgium, Bosnia, Germany, Georgia, uh, Haiti, Italy, Liechtenstein, Luxembourg, Macau, Malaysia, Netherlands, Sudan, uh, Switzerland, and uh, Tokelau. 
I guess the other one on the no minimum age is not Switzerland, but it's actually belong, uh, pronounced Swaziland. Must be another one like Switzerland. But that those last ones were minimum age of 16. 17 would be Cyprus and Malta. 18 are all others uh, that are not going to be mentioned for 19, 20, and 21. 19, uh, Nicaragua and South Korea. 20, Iceland, Japan, and Paraguay. And 21, a good old United States, Sri Lanka, Palau, Pakistan, Oman, Kaskakan, Indonesia. Any name that you did not hear are 18. Folks, what amazes me, totally amazes me, is the minimum age is not set in the countries of Albania, Angolia, Armenia, Cambodia, Camaros, Cuba, Equatorial Guinea, Guyana, Guinea-Bissau, Jamaica, Macedonia, Morocco, Norway, Romania, Swaziland, Togo, Uruguay, and Vietnam have no minimum age. Although it is commonly believed that the minimum drinking age in the U.S. is 21, people can legally drink below that age under many different circumstances. So again, there's a loophole in the minimum drinking age here in this country, United States. The national minimum Minimum Drinking Age Act of 1984 required all states to raise their minimum purchase and public possession of alcohol to 21. States that did not comply face reduction in highway funds under Federal Highway Aid Act. It does not prohibit persons under 21, also called youth or minors, from drinking. The term public possession is strictly defined and does not apply to possession for the following items an established religious purpose. Medical purposes when prescribed or administered by a licensed doctor, pharmacist, dentist, nurse, hospital, or medical institution. In private clubs or establishment, mind you, private clubs or establishments, there is no, uh, it, you don't need to be 21 to drink. In the course of lawful employment by a duly licensed manufacturer, wholesaler, or retailer, many of the states have chosen to uh, prohibit alcohol consumption by those under 20 have a variety of exceptions. For example, some states allow exception for consumption when their family member consents or is present. So if mommy and daddy are alcoholics and it's okay for their son or daughter to drink at 14, 15, it's okay in this country. Some, some states allow exceptions for consumption on private property. States vary in the extent of private property exceptions, which may extend to all private locations, private residence only, or in the home or parent guardian only uh, being supervised uh, over the younger person under 21. In some jurisdictions, the location exception is conditional on the presence or consent of parent, legal guardian, or legal age spouse. You see, folks, what's going on here is that there are loopholes for every law that is designed. Not just this country I'm talking about. I'm talking about globally. Do you see the loopholes? Do you see that for religious purposes, you can drink under 21? For medical purposes, as long as it's prescribed by a doctor, a nurse, or someone in the medical field that's licensed, it's allowed to drink under 21. In private clubs or establishments, it's allowed to drink under 21. And in a course of lawful employment by duly licensed manufacturer, wholesale, I guess so, if you work for Budweiser and you're 19 and they want you to taste test, or a wine company, it's okay to be under 21. What I don't agree is all loopholes. If we have a law, it should be a law for all. No loopholes. The following map show, shows the exceptions in the minimum age of 21 for consumption of alcohol in Jan, as of January 2011. And what this map, because you guys can't see the map, it consists of the states that have loopholes for under 21 drinking. And it's pretty much most southern states and way northwest states. The problem of identifying optimum minimum age drinking to reduce alcohol abuse is a serious one. It involves issues of freedom, responsibility, parental rights, religion, politics, and many other realms of life. Freedom, yes, I, I agree that we do have the freedom, but as being underage, your freedom needs to be 
uh, worked um, uh, in conjunction with uh, your parent or legal guardian, which is the chapters in the Book of Life, which is the role model. How can a good role model consent to having a person drinking? Now, I will give you this, folks. Being that most military people, like myself, at the age of 17 or 18 went into the military if we're old enough to serve this country fight for this country and worst scenario die for this country we should be old enough to drink so how do we separate military drinking age to compare to civilian under age you can't so it's either you set 21 for all or you set 18 for all now being that the majority of people are civilians Compared to military personnel, I say you have to do it at 21 to control it as a whole and as such. But my theory here is just that possibly what they need to do for military people is that maybe not in a public forum allow underage drinking. In other words, under 21. But if you're serving in the military, they should have on the military basis allowance for people 18 and up to start drinking. Again, if you're fighting for this country and you're willing to die for this country, you should be allowed to drink under 18 in this country. That's my thinking. Um, I am uh, definitely against drinking at all, but you know, I, I, you probably heard my interviews and I said to someone yesterday, there is nothing wrong with drinking as long as you can control the amount you drink and, and if it's a sociable drink. However, if you're a person like my like myself that has an addictive personality when it comes to drinking, then it's totally uh, not for, for you to do or for me to do. Um, uh, drinking goes back into the Bible, of drinking wine. But like anything, everything has to be in moderation. When you have to wake up to drink and you have to go to sleep and drink to sleep and you have to drink all day, you have an addiction. You have an addiction and you need help. And you need to stop denying you have addiction. Let's get back. In reaction to these problems, the president emeritus of Middlebury College created an organization, Choose Responsibility, to promote discussion and public debate about how best to reduce alcohol abuse. It has suggested a number of ideas. Choose Responsibly believes federal legislation should not penalize states that choose and to participate in pilot alcohol educational programs based on minimum drinking age of 18. Thus, is groups believe that one, states that present a plan for education or educating and licensing young adults that can maintain low levels of fatalities while lowering the drinking age or to be granted a waiver of 10% reduction penalty for a minimum of five years. Number two, states should create a mechanism to collect relevant da data required to monitor the effects of the change in the law. Number three, states should submit these statistics to Congress or its designate, along with analysis of the effects of the waiver from the inception and may not request either an extension of the waiver. Last but not least, number four, individual state proposals must include guidelines for eligibility and suspension of licenses proposed in model programs. Choose Responsibly also proposes new approach to alcohol education programs similar to driver's education in that it would be A, be taught by a certified alcohol instructor trained uh, specially to cover the legal, ethical, health, and safety issues of curriculum and skilled in dealing with young adults. So instead of just having Mr. Seaver of the art department teach you how to drive in school, they need to have a certified alcohol educator that's also certified to teach people how to drive a car. Number two, consists of at least 40 hours, hours of uh, instruction with the most time spent in the classroom setting supplement by session of co community involvement. DW Court Hearing Safe Ride Taxi Programs Community Forms. Number three, require partnership between home and school. Entail a final examination that a subject must pass for licensing. Provide accurate and unbiased alcohol education for both drinkers and abs uh, abstainers. The alcohol educational course cur curriculum world 
be a model for reality-based alcohol education, involve collaboration between state, school, and home, create a basis for responsible choices where alcohol is concerned, and wed those with expectation of responsible behavior to the system of certification and provisional license for 18 to 20 years old. Be developed and implement a state-by-state -state basis. Provide accurate, truthful, and unbiased alcohol education. It would acknowledge the social reality of alcohol in American society, but it would advocate neither absences nor consumption. It would seek only to create a basis for responsible choices where alcohol is concerned. And this is a group called Choose Responsibility also uh, uh, that designated all these uh, uh, amendments to the laws. Upon successful completion of the curriculum, each student of the program would receive a license entitled to recipient to all privileges and responsibility of an adult alcohol purchase, possession, and consumption of alcohol. So what they're saying is they want to come up with another Besides all these other loot, besides having, you can drink underage in religious purposes, medical purposes, private or uh, private clubs or establishments, or uh, if you're employed by Budweiser or a wine company, another loophole, and that would say that if you passed, choose responsibilities course, that you would be allowed upon successful completion of this curriculum. Each student of the program would receive a license entitling the recipient to all privileges and responsibility of an adult alcohol purchases, possession, and consumption of all alcohol. So at 18, because they passed this course, they should be able to drink. Folks, there's way too many loopholes in the laws. You either set it for 18 for everyone or set it 21 for everyone. The only loophole that I personally, my personal belief should be, that if you're serving in the military, as I did, at the age of 18, you should be allowed to drink. Again, I don't condone the drinking, but what I am saying is there are people that do not, like myself, or maybe even you, have an addiction to it. There are people that can drink in a social environment. There are drink people that can drink responsibly. So what I'm saying is that that should be the only loophole. Choose Responsible has suggested changes in the state policy to reduce alcohol abuse. It points out that states are allowed to legislate any of the following exceptions to the law prohibiting, prohibiting purchases, possession, and consumption of alcohol for ages under 8, 21. For establishment and religious purposes, we discussed that. That's totally ridiculous. For private clubs, totally ridiculous. When a company by a parent, guardian, or a spouse of 21 or above. Folks, if you have a mommy and daddy at home that are alcoholics, it's okay for the mother and father to say, go ahead, children, you can go and drink now. That is poor role modelship, and we're going to discuss that like we always do in all my videos. The majority of states take advantage of these allowances by legislating exceptions to possession or consumption of alcohol by minors under 21 and to furnish furnishing of alcohol by legal aged individuals. For example, 30 states currently allow for parents to provide their children with alcohol in the privacy of their own homes. 30 states. And then people wonder why our statistics are so high for fatalities, DWI. But in the remaining 20, parents are barred from providing their children with alcohol until the child's 21st birthday. Those who adhere to the strict rules at home in keeping with the state laws are, in fact, preventing from intru introducing young alcohol, uh, young adults to alcohol uh, in a controlled home environment. Good role leadership. This often regulates initial drinking experiences to settings where there is little but no supervision or guidance and a great deal of peer pressure to experiment. Parents across the country should be allowed and encouraged to provide their own children and their children's friends with alcohol and extent to the context of teaching and modeling responsible decisions about alcohol and its use. Folks, uh, folks, I mean, that, that's totally ludicrous. How can parents be allowed to give their children and their children's friends alcohol. There is much research evidence to suggest that these changes could reduce the 
extent of alcohol abuse. And so what they're saying is by you allowing your children and your children's friends to drink at your home, you're eliminating the possibility of your children going out there and experimenting and possibly getting uh, um, addicted to it. How about you, as the parent, start helping, like you're supposed to be, help your children through their chapters in their book of life from zero, their birth, until at least 18. From zero to 18, these four things should never happen in your home. Never smoking in front of your children, never drinking in front of your children, never using profanity in front of your children, and never ever, not just in front of your children, but never ever physically abuse. That should never happen in your home. These are the four things that have to, I mean have to happen in your home. You have to show love. You have to show respect for each other. You have to show compassion for each other. And you have to show passion. Four things have to. These four things don't. What this is saying, this, this alcohol article from the ATF is saying that Choose Responsibility, which is a pro, uh, an organization, thinks that by you allowing your children or giving your children alcohol and your children's friends when they come over, you are now preventing possibly for them to go out and be curious and preventing um, alcohol abuse. First of all, what right do you as the parent have to give your children's friends alcohol without consulting their parents? You have to be a good role model, folks. Remember, there should never be smoking in your house. If you need to smoke, go outside and do it. There should never be drinking in your house in front of your children. If you need to drink, go outside and do it. There should never, ever be trailer trash, foul mouth, profanity being spoken in front of your children or in your household. It's bathroom language. It's not in the Webster Dictionary. If you need to do it, either go into the bathroom and do it there or go out of your house and do it. That language, that profanity belongs in a toilet. Why don't you take your profanity starting today, October 6th, 2014, and flush it down the toilet. You should never ever physically abuse anyone at your home or anywhere else. If you do, you need to seek counseling and therapy. And if you're the victim of physical abuse, you need to call the authorities. Have the authorities take the person that's abusing you out in handcuffs and seek help, possibly come back into your home as a better person, then have the authorities take you out in a body bag. Because a punch and a slap here eventually becomes a knife or a gun, if not controlled early enough. What you should be doing every day is you should show love to your family. That's a role model. Show love. Show respect. In order to get respect from your spouse or from your children, you have to show respect. Show compassion. Whether it's your spouse or your children, if they're having issues, you need to show compassion. You need to show that you are the role model. You are the children's hero. And show passion. Be passionate about spending family days out or game nights with your family. It all starts like that. It starts in the book of life. It starts at zero when your ch children are born and you are responsible to help write their chapters. Each chapter is one year. So from zero to 18, it is your responsibility to help them. It is your responsibility to write your own chapters in your book of life. Mine started in 1961 and ends whenever my life ends. I am now up to chapter 52 in my book of life. What age? Well, what chapter are you in? And what are the previous chapters before October 6, 2014? What, what do they look like? I can tell you mine were less than desirable due to my alcoholism. Not due to my being a human, because I always was a caring and good person. However, my alcoholism took me down the wrong fork in the road, as my flyer shows when I'm 
out there uh, talking to people. My flyer shows a fork in a road. One says addiction, one says recovery. I chose addiction for so many years, but in 2013 when I hit rock bottom, I reached for my higher power, my God. In 2014, that fork in a road became the recovery fork. Let it be yours, October 6, 2014. Re or Continue writing your chapters in a book, but rewrite new chapters with new you. Today, it is never too late. If you had a whole weekend of drinking, and today it's Monday and you feel lousy, you need to change that. Folks, during my interviews, you probably heard, but I, there's one thing that you didn't get to see on my interviews is the fact you remember my first interview with this one gentleman who was drinking to $250 a weekend and beer his eyes were red that that was my first interview in Mastic Beach on Neighborhood Road and he was slurring his words well folks yesterday I was walking into the laundromat on Neighborhood Road and the first thing I noticed was him and his better posture and clearer eyes and better speech so I spoke to him, and you heard it on the interview, I spoke to him, and he said that he's been cutting down. Folks, this is what I'm talking about. If I can just help two people, me being one of them, and possibly being you, the second one. I know I made a difference in this person's life because I kept going towards him. I kept handing him flyers. I spoke to his family about it. And he, in smaller steps, is changing. Now, I will tell you, if you're drinking that kind of alcohol on the weekend, you do have an addiction. He, of, of course, was saying he can control it. I will take a half a loaf of bread, then no bread at all. Analogy translated is, if he cut down to from $250 to $100 a weekend in alcohol, my mission is working. My mission of helping people to learn that alcohol and drugs are no good for you and you can't live with them. Maybe in two or three weeks when I run into him again, he might be down to maybe $50. But as long as I don't run into him and he's up to 400 or 500 I know I am affecting someone out there. Let it be you. Why can you not, starting today, October 6, 2014, accept the fact that you might have a problem? June 22nd, 2013, I finally set, accepted that fact. For too many years, I was avoiding that because I thought I could control my life. I thought I could set my own direction, but I couldn't. And probably you can't either. There are so many different methods to, to deal with uh, alcoholism. I'm only going to mention three to the top of my head, and one would always be AA. The 12-step program, the 90, 90, 90 meetings in 90 days. Try AA. They've been around since 1936. Another method would be my method, which is educating you through videos, through articles written by doctors, psychologists, psychiatrists, through uh, other um, uh, reading material, through going out in the streets and talking to people, real people with real stories. That is my method. I choose to call it almost on-the-job training. I am training myself to be sober daily. I am not training myself in a classroom setting. I'm not training myself reading out of a book and the only book I will read out of when it comes to my sobriety is called the Bible. I am training myself with daily educating myself daily videos daily talking to people Sunday interviews that's my method and it works if you have an issue where you need to be supervised you need to go to a clinic they have the 30 60 90 day clinics go there check yourself in but no matter which method you use whether it's AA whether it's my method or it's the clinic you need to be aware that no matter what, you can never ever go back to your old abuse. And no matter what, you can never ever think that you're healed. I sit here before you very humbly to tell you I have an addiction still. 
I will always have an addiction. The difference is I have learned to live with it. I have learned to live with it so comfortably that I can walk into a supermarket, into a 7-Eleven, into an Applebee's or Friday's or whatever and not even think about possibly drinking one ounce of alcohol. It's not always been that easy. My first week or two was the hardest in my life. Thought I'd never succeed. And as Cookie said on one of my interviews, the temptation will always be there, and that's no doubt, because that is the one side of my brain that's controlled by the booze side and by the devil side that will always try to tempt me. But the other side, which is the cortex side of my brain, which is controlled by me and by God, is so strong and so much stronger than that other side that it will never, ever, ever happen. I will never, ever give up on continue educating myself on alcohol abuse. I will never ever give up on myself and I'll definitely never give up on helping you, wherever you might be. But it all starts today, October 6, 2014, for you to say, I know I have a problem. And when you say that, that's when you'll start seeing changes. And when you say that, it can't just mere, merely be words. You have to know that you have a problem. It's a disease and you cannot control it. And you definitely cannot ever fight addiction without including God. Yesterday we were taking a ride. My mother and my sister and my wife and I to my little sister's house over in shore in Long Island. And I brought my tablets for my mother to see the one video that I shot maybe a couple weeks ago called What Does the Bible Say About Alcohol? And why did I even do that one? It's because my point to you folks is that you cannot battle addiction without God included. You can have God without addiction, but you cannot have an addiction that you want to battle and you want to win and you want to live with daily without including your God. You need to include God for guidance and direction because you obviously, if you have a problem and you are not controlling that problem, you obviously cannot set your own guidance and direction when it comes to your addiction so you need to get the higher power involved and you will see astronomical changes once you quit the drinking and the drugging and you include your higher power in your daily thoughts your daily activities you will carry yourself different you will think different you accept other people differently and most importantly is you are different the difference is that you lack one thing that is has controlled you for all these years and you lack uncontrollable addiction. You still have an addiction, but you are controlling it. With the grace of God and your strong thinking, you can learn to live with the addiction forever until your end of time, until your chapters in your book of life are done. My chapters all started differently at the age of 51. 51 chapters. Out of that 51 chapters before I became sober, you have to think at least 34, 30, yeah, maybe 33 chapters included alcohol. So 33 chapters included alcohol. So at 51, it started changing. Can you imagine if God lets me stay on earth until I'm 85? that I can even out the balance where I had 33 with alcohol and 33 without, if God allows me to be around, that will be the outcome. And if God doesn't allow me to be around for that, that is His will. I was talking to my mother yesterday, we were sitting at McDonald's, and I told my mother, because she's nervous about all sorts of things like ISIS and uh, Middle East, and I said to my mother, those are things you cannot worry about daily. When your time is going to come, it's going to come because God knows today, October 6th, exactly when my mother is going to die, when I'm going to die, when my wife is going to die, my child, children, grandchildren. It's already pre-planned in his book. You can't avoid it. So why go through life worrying about things? Why? What you should be worried about is the love in your home, the respect in your home, the compassion and the passion in your home. What you shouldn't worry about is the Middle East and stuff like that. 
What you should also worry about is eliminating the alcohol, the drugs, the smoking, the profanity, and the physical abuse. Those are the things you should be worrying about. What you should worry about is are you a good role model? That's what you should worry about. With God giving you guidance and direction and you're admitting that you have a problem, you will see changes tremendously. You will. I promise you that. And you can text me anytime at 631-599-0218 or you can call me at 844-405-HELP anytime and we can talk about this. Folks, I make these videos not for entertainment purposes, but to help me and help you daily on your addiction, on your path of fighting addiction, on your path of living with addiction, on your path of becoming a better human, a well-balanced human. That is the sole purpose of these videos. It takes a lot of work and a lot of time to do these videos, but the rewards are tremendous for me. I'm sitting here a sober person because of one aspect and that's these videos amongst other reasons we were talking to my wife and I yesterday and I said I've created now 148 videos and, and let's set just say on an average each video is an hour which them some are more and some are less so on average an hour and then you add another four to five hours to prepare and finish that's a lot of time and effort put into this but the rewards are tremendous the rewards of my interviews on a Sunday that my wife and I would travel 33 miles to go there and 33 miles to come back to get maybe four or five interviews but the rewards that I reap from them are tremendous but more importantly the rewards that I'm giving out to people with education on, on prevention are even more tremendous ran into a boy and a girl yesterday on neighborhood road in Mastic Beach who I knew because they're they were pretty young not that young maybe 17 18 but I knew that I needed to talk to them and when I talked to them I gave them one of my flyers they thanked me and you probably heard this they thanked me because they said we need more people like you it is people like them and other people that make you want to do this for hour after hour after hour because the reward that you get from helping others besides getting the reward of helping yourself then is tremendous but it all starts in your home and it starts in your heart you need to eliminate the negativity around you because in order to have a positive life you need to have positive people around you and positive thoughts and you definitely need to battle your addiction once you have conquered the biggest hurdle of your life and that's the fact that you stop denying and you say I am ready and you reach up to your higher power and ask God for guidance and direction and from that point on you come up with an action plan what is your action plan going to be is it going to be AA is it going to be something like I do is it going to be a treatment center or is it going to be all three combined that is what you need to do but start today doing it October 6, 2014 can be a new chapter in your book of life. It is so easily started and all it is is for you to finally say, I've had it. I've had it. I want to be a better person. I want to be a better role model. I want to be a better husband, a better wife, a better father, a better grandparent. I want to just be better. I want to live longer. Eliminate the drugs and alcohol. More than likely, you're going to live longer. Eliminate the smoking. More than likely, you're going to live longer. And if you include God in your living, at the end of your time, you will know that when you need to stand in front of the, the gates of heaven, that you have tried your best to be the best human you could. That's it, folks. I mean, honestly. It all comes down to you. I can sit here and I can preach to you and I can go over all statistics all day, but it comes down to you. I can walk the streets and neighborhood road and do the best I can, but it comes down to you. I had a 
past one of the pastors yesterday asked me to come on a Monday at 4.30. He runs a class about addiction. He wants me to speak there. I have to go to the village meeting to speak there. These are all things that God is creating, opportunities, and he's not creating them for me to benefit. He's creating them for me to be the mouthpiece of reason on how to live with addiction. The only benefit I get out of doing any of this is the benefit that I'm daily educating myself and the hopes that I'm saving a life out there from possibly uh, an overdose. There are way too many overdoses out there, folks. To the point that even if I wanted to cry about it, I would, I would never stop crying because it, you look left, you look right, up and down, and there are overdoses, overdoses, overdoses everywhere. Overdoses due to lack of educating uh, on, on how much you can really do as far as drugs and alcohol before killing yourself. Uh, overdoses due to people just giving up on life. Overdoses due to stress, relationship issues. But without the grace of God, no matter how bad your life is, it will never get better unless you ask him to help you. Guidance and direction. The minimum age in some of these countries like Albania, Angola, Armenia, Cambodia, Comoros, Cuba, Guyana, Jamaica, uh, Monte, uh, Morocco, Norway, Romania, Togo, Uruguay, and Vietnam. There is no minimum age. Shame on those countries. United States, Sri Lanka, Palau, Pakistan, Oman, Kak Kazakhstan and Indonesia are 21. 16 is Austria, Belgium, but Bosnia, Germany, Georgia, Haiti, Italy, Liechtenstein, Luxembourg, Macau, Malaysia, Netherlands, Sudan, Switzerland, Tolokia. Those are 16. All others are 18. Let me clear this one more time. I truly believe that if you're serving in the military, that should be the only exception, not in a public forum for drinking under 21, but on the base. On a military base, under 18, uh, under 21, you should be able to drink. If you're 18, 19, or 20, and you're serving this country, and you're drinking on the base, it should be allowed, because if you're serving this country, and you're willing to die for this country, you're certainly entitled to drink. Responsibly. All... These other things that I talked about, I don't agree with. I don't agree with for religious purposes, under 21 you should be allowed to drink, for medical purposes, or because you work for a wine company, a Budweiser, or in a private club, you should not be able to drink. Laws have to be set for everyone, possibly, with the one exception. And that would be really under the military law anyway, because it's on a military base. But I'm saying for civilian, open forum, 21 Period. No exceptions. How do you feel about this? And text me, 631-599-0218. Facebook me. I have clearviews.info. I have um, a clear reform. I have an open group, clear reform. You can Twitter me. You can email me. You can. Uh, my email address is clearreform at yahoo. Two R's in clear reform. C-L-E-A-R-R-E-F-O-R-M. Google me. Uh, dogpile me, uh, dig me, blogger me, let me know. And you can certainly do this in an open forum on Facebook. You can mention me. I want to know what you feel about 21 drinking age, and I want to know if you agree there should be exceptions to that law. And if you do agree, please tell me why you agree that there should be exceptions. The only exception I say, and that's on a military base, for military law would be because if you're serving this country, you should be able to drink under 21. 18 to 21, not under 18. But that's on a military military base only. They should not, the military personnel should not be able to walk outside the base and be able to drink under 21. The law should be 21 for everyone in a social society. Let me know. Remember about the role model be a role model. Be the hero. Do that. And remember what I tell you folks. At night we all wear slipper shoes or sneakers. And when we go to bed we lay, leave them by the edge of our bed. The slipper shoes or sneakers. Tonight push them under your bed. Push them under your bed. That way tomorrow morning when you wake up you need to go on your knees. 
and you need to pull those slippers, shoes, or sneakers from under your bed, and while you're on your knees, thank the Lord that you're alive another day. For every breath you take right now, and you're able to breathe, there's someone in this world that's taking their last breath. For every time you open and close your eyes, there's someone that's closing their eyes for the last time. Thank God for every day that you're on this beautiful earth and let the sun shine into your heart and your home and you will get nothing but positive results. Get rid of the negative people. And when I say get rid of them, I'm not saying get rid of them physically. I'm saying avoid the negative things in life. Concentrate on the positive things in life. Because a sober today, I guarantee you, will give you a better tomorrow. And if you... Believe what I'm telling you, in here, it will become clear wherever you are. It will become so crystal clear. But you need to start by admitting you have a problem and then reaching for your higher power. And it all has to start not just with us individually, but it has to be done on a national level and on a global level. These tolerances on these statistics are irresponsible to have no minimum age in certain countries and 21 uh, in other countries. That is, there has to be a set thing, uh, a set age. And I do realize that every country is going to make their own thing. But in this country, we should not be able to allow our 21 and under people to drink in a religious setting or a medical setting or a private club or even uh, at a Budweiser plant or a wine tasting. They should not be able to drink there. Tell me what you think. Folks, you know how to get a hold of me. It's 844-405-HELP. My text is 631-599-0218. My uh, websites are clearviews.info and clearreform.com. Dr. Luis Gonzalez is at startingpointmn.com. Uh, his phone number is 844-414-8444. You can find Pam Hemphill uh, on Time to Heal. TV talk show, they focus on recovery on YouTube and on Facebook and also on my website. She has her own page, www.clearviews.info. You can find all three of us on with those informational uh, snippets I just gave you. But more importantly than finding us is you need to find yourself. Look in the mirror today after this and look at yourself and say, do I like what I see? Does my family truly think that I'm a hero? Am I a good role model? If you can answer no to some of those, it's time for change. Are you drinking excessively? Do you depend on drinking? Are you doing drugs? If the answer is yes to those, you need to look for time for change. It's then you need to drop to your knees and say, I have a problem and I can't control it myself like I had to do. Because I couldn't. And there is no shame in admitting that you have a problem. Because alcohol is not something that you choose to do alcoholism it's a disease but like any disease cancer whatever the disease might be hiv everything needs to have an action plan to at least try to heal and give you longer life but if you don't control your alcoholism your life will be shorter if you don't control the consumption of your drugs and alcohol your life will be shorter to the point where you might even overdose and then you leave your loved ones behind second guessing them what happened was it because of stress was it because of a uh, relationship issue or was it just because you were so reckless with your own consumption these are the things you need to worry about start today october 6 2014 start today changing your life and let me help take your life back god bless you and have a great day